glaciers have a big impact on the whole world, but there's a lot we don't know about how they work. Let's follow some glacier scientists as they surge into research. Hi! <laughs> I think we should wait to put the sensors in until we have it on the pole. So I study glaciers in Alaska and Greenland, and I'm working to understand how they're changing with changes in climate nowadays. Duke's Lou is a graduate student at Boise State University. She, her team leader, assistant professor Ellen Enderlin, and her colleagues are studying why glaciers surge. A surge is a special event on a glacier where it goes from its typical slow flow to really fast flow, 10 times faster than normal. They're studying Sitkusa, or Turner Glacier, in southeastern Alaska. Sitkusa is really special because it has a really short surge cycle of eight years. That's the shortest cycle for surging known in the world. And it gave us this really great opportunity for us to go out and put instruments at the glacier and combine that with all of these satellite data sets and try to figure out what's going on, what causes these surges. So how do you study a glacier 20 miles long? So what we did was we have Glacier instruments, we have ones that are on the ice, and then we have ones that are next to the ice. And so the ones that are next to the ice are a bunch of seismometers. So those are recording shakings of the earth or just things nearby. In this case, we want to know about shaking of the earth due to water flowing beneath the glacier. We also have two cameras that are out at the end of the glacier, and they are taking photos of the glacier really regularly. Then we also have GPS unit, and so that tells us how, they're, how it's moving, how it's flowing, um, but also if its surface elevation is moving up and down. Each summer, the team checks existing sensors and collects data, and then puts out new instruments to gather more information. It's always challenging to work on a glacier. It is obviously a really dangerous location. Problems that can happen that we find when we get there range from anything like the batteries are not connected anymore to a bear has chewed up a cable and it's not transmitting data to the computer anymore. And so we have to be really flexible when we're out there. The team works in pairs in different locations on different days. They use a helicopter to get around. The next day, whose task is to fix one of the instruments. When we found this seismometer, it was a little bit leaned over and it measures motion in three directions. So we really want it upright to make sure we have the right reference for our data. So for this project, we're really hoping that we get a good idea of what's going on beneath the glacier. And that's important not only for this like one to two percent of glaciers worldwide that have these surges, but we know that there are these instabilities that even bigger glaciers, so the Antarctic ice sheet, can have these instabilities where suddenly the ice flows really quickly and is driven by something going on at the base. And so we're really hoping to get a, a good idea of what goes on at this particular glacier and that that will help tell us about what is going on at all of these glaciers that can have these sorts of instabilities. The team will take the data collected on the glacier and bring it back to Boise. There they'll analyze the information. So we've learned from all these different instruments and all the satellite data that we've gotten that this glacier actually changes in speed a lot. Not just every eight years when it surges, but every year in the winter it actually speeds up. And that's really strange. And we think it has to do with water flowing through the glacier and being stored inside the glacier over winter that then makes it to the bottom and makes the glacier slide more easily over the winter. The team now has some of the most detailed records of glacial motion of any glacier in the world. And what they've discovered may apply to glaciers all over the Earth. Scientists are trying to better understand how glaciers are going to change moving into the future. And so in order to predict how these glaciers will affect the global climate system in the future, we need to understand how they work. 
And understanding all this is especially important because climate change is causing glaciers to disappear. We lose our glaciers, we absorb more of the sun's energy, and then that causes the atmosphere to warm even more. And also, as we pump out more water into the oceans, that can influence our ocean circulation as well, which also controls climate. And so there are these really big picture things that people often don't talk about. They normally focus on sea level rise, which is important if you're in a coastal community. But for the rest of us, there are lots of other things that even if we don't live near a glacier, these glaciers can have a really big impact on us overall. Work on Sitkusa isn't done. They'll be back next summer to monitor any changes and see what else they can find out. Scientific discovery. That's one of the reasons why Lou and Enderlin became geoscientists. I've always really been interested in the environment. I've always loved being outdoors. And so studying glaciers and how they're changing with climate and how they affect the landscapes around them feels to me like a way to give back to nature and help conserve it for future generations. If you want to learn more, head to the Science Trek website. You'll find facts, links, games, material for educators and parents, and much more. You'll find it all at sciencetrek.org.